Hello everyone, Mary Rose here at Stitch Bliss Corner and uh, life is full of surprises and uh, here's one. <laughs> it's November 2021. I'm not saying the actual date because I don't know when this will go up. Um, now, I it's been about a year and my last video, I did intend to be my last video. Uh, but there have been a few things that have happened and I just wanted to update people who are still interested in what's happening in Mary Rose's world <laughs> to let you know. Um, first of all, I, I want to give my heartfelt thanks to all of those who left comments on the last video that I did. Um, there were some... I was greatly moved by what was said and I really do appreciate every single person that took the time to make a comment. Uh, it was lovely. Uh, now over the months I've had various people ask how I am and all that sort of thing because I did leave my videos up and I thought well and also there was a little bit of consternation that, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat always goes when I'm doing this, um, that there were some pieces that weren't completed and I was swinging off without showing the completed pieces. So I'm going to rectify that today. Now, I'm just going to go to a couple of health issues. <laughs> uh, mostly to give people... Well, information is knowledge, you know, like it's it's good to have information ahead of time in case something does happen. Um, so you'll understand what I mean in a minute because I can feel myself waffling already. <laughs> anyway, so my right eye, I was just having a bit of trouble with it. It was feeling like I could almost feel my socket in my eye. Um, there was sort of a bit of pressure in there um, and I thought oh you know I'll go next time I go to the optician I'll mention it and uh, there were some appointments and I thought well I may as well go now uh, so I went in and the pressure in both of my eyes was sky high uh, and the optician said look I'll have to send you straight to the specialist uh, he said, because, you know, the pressure is so high in, in your eyes. So I went to the specialist and uh, he gave me some laser therapy to... What happened was I, I was diagnosed with acute angle glaucoma. Now, acute angle glaucoma is relatively unusual, but the symptoms can be so mild that you don't even notice until you've actually lost the sight in your eye. Uh, I was very lucky because although my symptoms were mild, um, they caught it probably within hours of me losing sight in my right eye. And my left one wasn't much better. And my specialist said that my eyes are quite small, actually. <laughs> Which, who would have thought it? And, uh, uh, what happens is in the front part of your eye it's all irrigated and the fluid has to get away and it usually gets away, well it does get away, through the canal of Schlem um, and so it's sort of like you've got a little tap that's on all the time and the drain is there to drain away the fluid as it's being made to keep your eye healthy. Well my drain was completely blocked just about um, and uh, so anyway I had the um, lasering done which brought the pressures down immediately and I then had to have two lens extractions and uh, new, ex new lenses put in because the lens in your eye is very flexible but as you age it gets more rigid and because I had the acute angles as my lens uh, hardened it just built the pressure up in there. But I really didn't have any clue because my vision was 
fine, you know. I've, and they do call glaucoma the silent stealer of sight. So I'm just letting stitchers know, and anyone else, that to get your pressures in your eye checked uh, every couple of years or so is just so important to do that. Uh, or, and if you ever get any kind of feeling there might be a bit of pressure in there, you know, just go and get them checked. I mean, in the old days they used to have to put a, a, an actual instrument on your cornea. Um, but just to check generally if it's okay now, they could just blow some wind in your face and that, that tells them. And then if they're concerned, well then they put the direct one on your cornea to check your pressures. So that's a little health warning for you. Uh, now the second thing that happened uh, was in August. Um, strangely, I was pacing off to my <laughs> eye specialist from to check my eyes and I was going fairly briskly and uh, I went into this mall uh, just you know just to reach his surgery and they would put some artificial grass on the on the mall. Um, and it looked as though it was flat, it was an optical illusion, and uh, it was undulating. And of course, I had my trainers on, and you know, they're very non... They, you know how they are, they, um, to stop you from slipping, ironically, uh, they're pretty... They've got good traction on them. And then I came up against this artificial grass that also had little traction on it so it was like a speeding train flying <laughs> anyway I ended up going blam straight down um, and landing on my right shoulder and uh, the upshot of that was that I fractured this right uh, humerus here and uh, when I went to the hospital you know I suppose it's a bit my fault really because I'm one of these oh you know just carry on <laughs> yeah, it might be a bit sore for a few days um, but my left arm was very badly bruised as well um, and because of Covid I didn't have anyone with me to speak up or anything and I think I was a little bit in shock so when the because I went there by ambulance you know and when the nurse said, oh, can you sit in a chair to wait for your x-ray? I, I did. I sat there. And I had to get someone to carry my bag, my, you know, shoulder bag, into the x-ray unit because this left arm was so bad. Anyway, so I did the x-rays and I wasn't seen by a doctor because it was uh, like a specialist nurse that diagnosed and he'd sent the x-ray up to the orthopaedic guy and he just sent down oh fine just put a collar and cuff on it and pain relief and sent her home which is what you would normally do that's not a problem for a simple fracture uh, anyway I got home and uh, I was just you know it was I was so in a lot of pain and everything and incapacitated to a certain degree I mean for someone that walked usually every day I stopped doing any of that because I was basically just lying back in on the bed and I was moving around as much as I could but the, I had so much discomfort. Anyway a week later um, I'm there preparing for bed and I had a an episode of extreme shortness of breath so the ambulance guys turned up again <laughs> carted me off and this time I developed a pulmonary embolus or a few of them actually, from inactivity. Um, and when I went into the, it was a different hospital I went to, and they gave me the once over, and it turned out that I bruised my left lung as well as heavily bruising this arm. And that's why I was unable to move around as much as I normally would have. Um, and when you're used to activity and suddenly you're not doing it, especially when you're 68, uh, <laughs> it can cause clots to happen and that's what happened to me. So I ended up in intensive care for three days and coronary care for two days. 
um, and now I'm on blood thinners. <laughs> so what I'm trying to get round to saying is, if you fracture any bone in your body and you're not as active as you normally are, make sure that you discuss that with the, the medical team that you're talking to to give you preventative blood thinners so that you don't develop any clots because uh, had I been assessed correctly in the first place maybe the second part wouldn't have happened to me because basically I nearly died so that's how important it is if you break a bone to have that in the back of your mind and a member of my family actually who they were in their 20s and they broke a, a very small bone in the the leg and you know, not the big bone but in the ankle around there somewhere and they had uh, coverage blood thinners um, because they weren't going to be moving around so much and that's someone young so just bear that in mind uh, so that was something that I wanted to put out there for people because I thought if it saves one person's sight or if it saves some person's life that breaks a bone um, it was worth doing this video and I was talking to Harlequin about because usually if I make a decision I don't change it you know I decided I wasn't going to do any videos and that was it but Harlequin said to me it's it's a lady's choice to change her mind <laughs> so, and I thought this is important so I'm going to do it and I thought well well I've got you here <laughs> those who haven't nodded off by now <laughs> Uh, I thought I would update you on the pieces that have been completed for those who felt cheated <laughs> and I can understand that too because you know you're watching someone's progress and then suddenly oh well that's it you know I'm off <laughs> that's not very very good so I thought uh, I you know I'll rectify that now is there anything else? I saw I've just got some notes here. Yeah, no, I've done that. That was just to let you know so I didn't forget. Right, on to the interesting bit. Now, uh, I think I'll just show you the completed one of It Did Not End. This one here, um, Stony Creek. Uh, now, if you look, it's hard to see this because it's printed, but there was a sun there that I didn't put in. And I've stitched this for someone um, in particular. Uh, now, I changed, I didn't put the sun in, I did not outline all of the areas on the cross or the dove. I used 16 count hand dyed Ada and My mother-in-law passed away at the grand age of 98. Uh, bless her heart, she had a very active life almost until she went. Um, and uh, the minister at her funeral, I wanted to give her uh, something for the wonderful service that she conducted. So I thought this particular piece would go very well to her. So I had it framed uh, and here it is now. I'll just... And I've used the non-reflective glass. And that Ada is just so perfect for this piece. So she will be receiving that soon. My mother-in-law lived quite a way away, so we've got to take that up next time we go. Right, so that's that one. Now the other piece that I was stitching was this gold collection, Petites. And I didn't like 
the outboard motor there because I'm someone that doesn't like loud noises so I didn't stitch the outboard motor I sort of worked my way around not doing that uh, this is by Daryl Bush um, mind you I didn't put any oars in there so how the person actually arrived there <laughs> is a mystery to everyone <laughs> so, but anyway so I'll just show you that I've popped it in a frame just to give you an idea of how it looks but you can see the outboard motor is missing but petites dimension petites are amazing in that they're small but they seem to keep all the detail in and uh, how they do that is a mystery to me so that's that one now then oh yes now Another one that I couldn't get out of my head, so naturally enough I had to stitch it, was this one. Red Troublemakers. <laughs> I laugh every time I look at it. And this one. <laughs> this is a Russian pattern. And uh, so many Russian designs are so good, aren't they? Uh, so I'll just show you this one. and it stitched up a treat and it was great fun stitching that so that's red troublemakers and that artist knows cats very well so, let's pop that down there I'm just looking to see if I can see the artist here. No, I think it's it's all in the. No, I don't really think I can see it there. But anyway, if you look up red troublemakers, you'll find it. Now the other piece that I was captivated by was this one by Artisy Winter Chapel uh, and this one is by Mark Keithley who seems to be developing into a favorite of mine actually <laughs> so so I decided to stitch that one and I used 18 count I usually use 18 count Ada for all my full coverage because the fabric is very strong and uh, if you're covering it completely, well, why would you not use a strong fabric for a full coverage piece? I mean, if you're using, if you're wanting to stitch skin or something like that, well, then, you know, I understand using the uh, fine account fabric for that so that you can get the uh, detail of the skin. But other than that, I can't see any reason why a full coverage piece uh, you would use anything other than a very strong fabric like Ada that's so uh, durable and everything. So here's Winter Chapel. Sorry about my ring light showing. It's tilted a bit. But you can almost feel how chilly that is. It's got great atmosphere. So that's, that's that one. And I got that one professionally framed. Just as the one for the minister is framed. So I'm just being careful there. Right. Now, here's one from the archives. Uh, these are Australian wildflowers. Um, DMC, Hel Helene Wild, and there are flannel flowers there, Sturt's Desert Pea, Bottle Brushes, uh, Banksia, um, and Wattle, that's the yellow, um, and Kangaroo Paw, that's what 
that one is there. So I just thought I'd show you that one, seeing as I've got it to hand here. This one was at my mother-in-law's house because I gave it to her and, uh, and it came back to me in the end. So there it is, there's the eucalyptus blooms there. Now, oh yes, now here's Floral Retreat by Dimensions Gold Collection. Oh, I'll just take it out of the plastic. And I liked this because it reminded me of ancient Greece and the gardens and everything. Um, refuge, yeah, Floral Retreat, Vale Oxley. And I used everything that was in the kit for this one. Now, what I did change though was, if you look carefully, you can see these buildings in the background. And because I wanted to feel like it was ancient Greece, I didn't do the buildings. What I did was I changed it so that it looked almost like a mountain in the distance there. And I just framed this myself with some frames I got from the equivalent of Hobby Lobby for my American viewers. Uh, my daughter gifted me uh, some money to go and get some frames and I got a whole lot that were all the same. And uh, because I, I think the stitching is the most important part, not the frame. By the same token, I do realise that with the professionally framed ones, they do do a great job of bringing out features of the stitching that help to make it look better in some ways. But in my case, for this one, I just want it nice, a nice and simple. So that's that's floral re retreat, and that was great fun stitching that one. Okay, so that's that one. Oh now, in the video, uh, the last video I made, I showed you the computer design of Jesus walking along the shore um, by Mark Missman, um, and I just framed that in a very simple frame um, that you know for my bedroom. Well. Harlequin and I's bedroom. <laughs> uh, so I thought I'd show you that. And I did put a text underneath, and I'll just read that to you first. And it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, full of grace and truth. That's from John. And And as I say, the lights always pick up this rippling effect there, which my stitching does have. And I have no problem with that because it's stitching. It's not a photograph, it's not painted, it's stitched. So of course it's going to have these little uh, areas like that. But when it's on the wall and in the bedroom lighting, you can't see that anyway, not that it would matter. So that's, that's him framed. And there's a tremendous sense of peace and harmony about this piece. So I'll just pop that one down. Now I, I've made that poor person wait a long time. <laughs> the one that wanted to know what happened with one of my pictures that I, I hadn't completed. Um, I'm just going to put that up now. So 
and I'm just looking for something. Now this, there was a story to this one. Steve Reed, Across the Divide. And anyone who's watched my videos would remember this one. And I put up some um, wedding photographs and this stitching was inspired by one of my wedding photos, which I shall show you now. That's that one there. Um, I think Harlequin printed me out a bigger one. Yes, there's a bigger one for you. Our wedding photographer was just amazing. He was inspired by Rembrandt and uh, Rembrandt was a great user of shadow and light and everything. So that's what inspired this particular stitching. And so I'm going to show it to you now. Completed for that lovely person that wanted to know what it would look like. So it is a very big piece as you can see. And see the title across the divide. I thought it was appropriate for Harlequin and I because unless we both go together, you know, one of us is going to be across the divide from the other until the other one joins them. So it just seemed very appropriate um, to stitch this for us. So there it is. I can't really see what I'm showing you, but anyway. So, as you can see, there are undulations there, but when you iron it and you stretch it, uh, because Scout was the same, this one behind me, he had undulations and things, but when I got it professionally framed, he, they pulled them out. But I mean, it's not necessary, but if you do get it, professionally done well they're going to do that for you aren't they so I'll just show you the bottom half now you've seen the top half this is a bit difficult because it's so big just those horses down there the way they're riding off together And some of this, the top, I did half stitches rather than full, um, just to get a bit of depth in there. So anyway, there, that's for that lovely person, I won't mention her name, that wanted to know, there it is. <laughs> so I don't feel bad anymore because you've seen it. Okay, so I'll just roll that one up. quite humid here today I feel a bit hot okay um, now another one that caught my eye and I've wrote written down a few tips for this one why not? <laughs> Was this one. Now over the years I've seen this and something about it just captivated me but not enough to stitch it because I thought I'm not really, it's not really my usual thing that I would stitch. But then one day I thought no oh, I've cracked I'll just have to get it. So I, I did get this one and it's Dolphin's Domain by James Hemsworth. And my favourite part of this, are these in the background there. How lovely is that? Just a few stitches and yet there's a little school of dolphins in the background. And Harlequin likes this one here, this um, baby. And I did my absolute best to try and get those expressions exactly the same as picture. Now what were my tips? Use a large needle for the five threads if you decide to use the five threads. Um, you see I think the problem I have with dimensions is you know they want you to do 
five threads here, four threads there, you know, and combination threads and everything. But I don't think they supply enough threads really to be able to do that because if you have to frog or anything, or even if you don't, I don't think they supply enough. Uh, so, but I don't always use the what they tell me anyway. If I want to use three, I'll use three, and if I want to use one, I'll use one. That's my, just what I do. Um, but I must say that with this one, and I did run out of a few things, I just used DMC thread that was very similar colour, and I didn't have any problems. So you wouldn't know where I use DMC. So I thought, well, if they're not going to send me the enough, and uh, I'm not going to be running after them trying to get more threads from them, uh, I'll just match them up with my DMC, which is always a very reliable thread as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, I always feel like DMC gets a bad rap, you know, as so, though because they're cheaper than all the others that uh, people think they're inferior, which they're, they're not. I mean, DMC has been around for yonks, you know, and it's a very reliable thread. You know, I'd rather use that than some, what do they call it, uh, designer threads, I suppose you'd say, or um, that maybe the, the colour will run out of them when you wash it. Who knows? So I'll stick with the DMC. And so here it is anyway. Uh, lovely piece. Beautiful corals. And uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed stitching that. You know, I mean, I, d I, only, I always use a hoop uh, because I enjoy my stitching much more using a hoop. Um, I did try doing it in hand years ago, but even for me, it was a little bit too warp looking and I thought, no, nah, this isn't going to work for me. But uh, I would never use frames because I like to be closer to my work, as close as possible. Uh, so I use small hoops. Um, now, I will now show you the one that uh, I'm obsessed by now. Uh, <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. I'll just one more before I do that. Uh, I'm going to be starting this one, The Rise Above, which I thought would be a good companion piece for Scout here, but it's a lot smaller. I didn't realise. It's, uh, I'll use 18 count, so it's seven, uh, 14 inches wide and 17 inches high, or 36 centimetres by 43 centimetres. And this is Mark Keithley. So I'm going to be starting that. I'm just getting all the threads ready, you know. I mean, it's just always very exciting doing the gridding and getting everything ready for a piece. I usually do that in the evenings if I'm watching TV or something. At the moment, we're, go we're going through... Harlequin, for my birthday, <laughs> bought me the entire collection of Gunsmoke, which <laughs> there's hundreds of episodes. <laughs> So we're trying to get through them. We do about three a night because they're not that long. Well, the early ones weren't. Anyway, I don't know if it got longer as the series went on. But uh, it's very enjoyable. I think uh, all the actors are fabulous in it and the actresses as well. And I do still stick to the feminine uh, actress, aviatrix, whatever, because I'm thinking... There are, you know, it's almost like women are now being all of our special names for us. I mean, like Bachelorette. I mean, whatever happened to Spinster? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's like, does that, is Bachelor a better word because it's more male sound? You know, I, I don't want to get into it, but it just annoys me. So I stick with the female things anyway. Um, yes, it's this one. And it's Dear Guest from Far Away. Oh, haven't I got the artist's name there? Anyway, it's 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 a a Russian artist anyway. And I'm not sure of the story because um Oh, I really should have a look. Hang on a tick. I'll just have a look here. Let's see if it's on this picture I've got.
I'll pause it here so that I can just give you the details. Just hang on a tick. Oscar Freeworth. F R E I W I R T H. Just have a quick look here. Oscar, yeah. And I think I read somewhere, it's a little bit hard to find information on this artist, but I think I read somewhere that he is Russian and it's in the uh, Heritage Museum in St. Petersburg, I think. But don't quote me on that, I'm just saying that I think that's possible. Um, so anyway, the thing about this, I'll just, well, no, I won't show you on the iPad because it's a bit hard. Let's show you on here. Every single part of this has got something happening in it. So you've got the trunk here with all the treasures that the guest has brought with him. And I thought I read somewhere that he, this is in, in Austria or Switzerland or somewhere. And this must be the owner of the house. And on the wall, just behind his head, it's hard to see it. Yeah, it's too hard to see, but that's a, an icon. So I'm thinking uh, a Christian icon there. So I'm thinking that this guy might be Russian as well, but he's just living in another country. And this guy has come from Russia to visit him. And the servant is there pouring some wine into the goblet. Uh, but oh, it's just lovely. And the thing that obsessed me the most was this guy's boot here. And I, what I'll do, I, I will show you that on the iPad because it's easier to see it. Just look at that boot. I mean, what's not to like? <laughs> it's just, so because of that boot, I am usually, as everyone knows, a centre starter. But I couldn't wait to stitch it, so I started at the bottom. So I'll just show you my progress on that, because that's what I'll be stitching on for quite some time, because the piece is very big. I saw this on Russian floss tube. And I saw it a few times and I thought, oh, no, you know, it's, it's too big, you know. And then I thought, oh, no, well, maybe not. So, so you can see by the amount of, it's big. So I'll just get down to the bottom part to show you. I'm nearly across the bottom. So there's the trunk that's in the corner. Here, yeah, that's the trunk with his, and it looks like pearls or something there. And look at that, look at that rug there. That's one of the ornate rugs, the pattern in it. There's his, his shoe or his boot. I restrained from going further up with it. I thought, no, don't do that. <laughs> Have a bit of self control. You can do a bit more of that when you come back a, across. And look at that, he's put the little trip hazard in there. And then there's another bit of carpet rug overlaying that one. That's just down here. So you can see I'm getting towards this and that's the end of the bottom. So then I'll have a bit of an idea uh, but the rate of progress isn't too bad, you know, I mean, I know I've got a long way to go. But I think the great thing with this piece is that every single part of it has got something exciting to stitch. So it's never boring. I suppose, having said that, going up here is going to be a bit plodding. But it's all to create the atmosphere of over here. So you're doing it for a reason. So that's what I've been working on of late. Then I've got Rise Above, which I will be starting in the middle because 
which is good because all the action's in the middle anyway. So <laughs> that'll be good. Um, and then I'll just give you some idea of my plans for my stitching. And, uh, you know, maybe if I can get enough progress, I might just show you sometime in the future. Uh, but, uh, right, so I'll just show you some of the other things I got. Harlequin decided to spoil me with some things. This one here, which is the village canal. Uh, we loved, we went on a barge for about three days in England with my sister and brother-in-law and we just loved it. And that's always appealed to me. So I'll be stitching that. So that's that one. Then we have this one. The, oh, sorry, I'm just looking to see if there's is there an artist there. Sung Kim. And then this one, which is also by Sung Kim. Tranquility. Yeah, tranquility. This is also a lovely atmospheric piece. I don't know, it's got a cat on there, on the little settee. Ignoring the view and snoozing. <laughs> so that's that one. Uh, and then I have some petites as well, just for future reference. And if you're a new stitcher, uh, do be careful to avoid petites until you get to be uh, more experienced, because they are a bit of a handful. I mean, they're okay if you're experienced and you know what to expect, but don't be uh, fooled by the size of them. They can be quite intricate. So I got that one, which is... Bayside Cottage by Kate Beetle. Then we've got Overlook Cafe by Sun Kim. Scenic Lighthouse. And this one's, but I do like lighthouses. Uh, let's see. Red Farm Studio is the design. That's where it came from. And then this one. Beacon at Rocky Point. I can't see an artist on this one. But anyway. So there we are. So that's what I've been up to for all those lovely people who were wondering whether I'm still stitching or what I'm doing. Uh, it was very nice to catch up with you all today and uh, just let you know how things are going for me. I mean, it's been quite a year, that's for sure, <laughs> with one thing and another. Uh, and uh, But I mean, I am so grateful to the medical teams for what they did for me and um, yeah I would like to wish everybody uh, a great 2022 and a very wonderful Christmas uh, as well, well I'll haul the turkey out I always get a turkey every Christmas and the Christmas puddings we always have a traditional Christmas in our household um, my arm is you know coming along pretty well I mean it's great physio with the stitching I mean two weeks after I broke it I managed to put some stitches in so <laughs> because that's the thing is the boredom you know if you're used to stitching every day and suddenly you can't stitch it's not good you know and I was sitting there thinking well you know I could be reading but I, I just couldn't seem to get my mind to anything it was very restless um but anyway uh it's all sorted out now. Uh, so I will sign off. Um, thank you all very much for your company. Um, 
I think that stitches are some of the sweetest people on the planet, that is for sure and certain. And uh, maybe I'll see you again some months into the future if I if I get far enough with you know if people are interested to see how dear guest from far away is going uh, it's just well I can't tell you the joy I get from stitching that piece not as much as my Jesus piece the walking along the shore that nothing will ever top that but uh, this has been great physio for me uh, so you know I can move it pretty well now and do all that sort of stuff <laughs> but uh, boy you know you realize oh and that was the one see there are good things that come out of adversity because as people would know that watch my videos they know that I do not like cooking at all I do it but I don't like doing it um, and whereas I wouldn't say that I actually look forward to going in there now uh, it's not so much of an ordeal I mean once that you haven't been able to use your arm and do the normal things and then you can um, it, it just makes it a lot better when you just go out to cook up a meal because I mean my meals are pretty quick anyway I mean I shouldn't be so silly about them because you know I mean they're tasty enough but <laughs> I don't go to great lengths you know like some people do uh, because I suppose if you're interested in cooking well that's a different thing I mean I can make custard so quickly um, I have this technique uh, I suppose I could tell you my custard technique and then I'm going. What I do, um, because I use um, I guess a, a litre of milk and you just put a small amount into, a, I usually use a saucepan but I suppose you could use a bowl. Um, I put a cup full of custard powder in there with a very small amount of milk and I stir that round so it's almost like a paste, you know. Then I get the rest of the milk and I put that on the stove, heat it to boiling and then I pour the boiling into the paste and stir it and it's perfect custard every time. Sometimes it might be a bit thicker than you want. You know, you have to get your own little technique going of your paste, whether you want to add a little bit more milk to the paste that you're making. Um, but you know a bit of trial and error and you can make very quick custard and that was a great gift for me because at Christmas everybody was waiting for their Christmas pudding and I was making the custard and I'd be out there stirring for hours you know and it's boiling hot in Australia and quite often at Christmas and it wasn't a pleasant experience for any of us <laughs> even though I insisted on having the Christmas pudding myself <laughs> and uh, now I can whip it up in a few minutes so yeah roll them on so, yes, have a wonderful 2022, and uh, I may well see you down the track. So goodbye for now from Mary Rose.